So thinking about the process of defecation, the passing of the stool. So here we have the end part of the sigmoid colon. And that reflects through an angle into an elongated widened part called the rectum. And that narrows again into the anal part, the anal canal. So what we have here is the sigmoid colon at the top. The rectum. And the anal canal at the bottom. And just so we've got some sort of context here, if we think about the ilium bringing in material to the cecum with the ascending colon, the appendix is a blind ended pouch from the cecum, the transverse colon, the descending colon, sigmoid colon, and then the rectum and anus. So we're looking at a blow up of this bottom part here, the rectum and the anus. This part here is the anal canal. And in the anal canal, there's two sphincters. There's a internal sphincter and there's an external sphincter. So two sphincters of the anal canal. Now, you might remember from last video, all the time there's material coming into the um, colon through the ileocecal valve, going through the colon, this process of hiatal churning with peristalsis, with the absorption of the vitamin, some vitamins and um, water and ions and the activity of the symbiotic bacteria. But this goes on slowly. But then from time to time, normally stimulated by the gastrocolonic reflex. So when something goes into the stomach, there's going to be more vigorous contraction of the colon. And particularly in the last half of the colon, there's going to be mass movement, mass transit. So faecal material that is in the transverse colon and the, I'm calling it faecal material, it's essentially faecal material now, it's chime when it first comes in. So normally we've had a bit of peristalsis going on for a few hours now and we've got, it starts off fairly liquid there, becomes sludgish, sludgy and gets uh, semi-formed by the time it goes round. So this material is now accumulating here and it's moving through very slowly. Now what we need to appreciate is that normally the rectum is empty. The rectum is normally empty. So from time to time we need to do a per rectum examination. We can put a finger in, feel the rectum inside of the rectum and it is normally empty. In fact, that's a good test for constipation. If we put the, do a per rectum examination and find the rectum's full of faecal material, that's very probably indicating the patient is um, constipated. So what happens is the gastrocolonic reflex triggers very rapid peristalsis, mass transit, this is called, mass movement or mass transit. And through from the second half of the colon, there's very vigorous activity pushing this material down, and that has the effect of filling up the rectum. So there's mass transit in the second half of the colon. So that means the rectum, which is normally empty, is going to receive this fecal material, and that's going to fill up the rectum. Now what happens in simple terms is that the rectum is stretched and that triggers the defecation reflex. 
and the defecation reflex involves contraction of the rectum. Autonomic or automatic relaxation of the internal sphincter voluntary relaxation of the external sphincter. We also push down with the diaphragm and abdominal muscles to increase the pressure, and that squeezes the fecal material out of the rectum as stools. Now that's what happens in basic terms. But if we think about a little more detail, what we have all the time is nerve supply to the rectum and anus. So coming down here from uh, L1 and L2, the first and second lumbar vertebrae, we have a sympathetic nerve supply and a branch of this will go off to the um, rectum and another branch will go off down to the, uh, the internal sphincter. So there's going to be sympathetic stimulation and this is going to be going on for most of the time. And what this sympathetic stimulation does is inhibits the contraction of the wall of the rectum. So that means there is no stimulus to contract the rectum. This is actually relaxing it. But at the same time, there's ongoing positive effect here and there's going to be contraction of the internal sphincter. So all the time without you realising it, the sympathetic nervous system activity contracting the internal sphincter. And that's what stops odd little bits of liquid faeces running out of the rectum, which would be very unpleasant. So we have ongoing autonomic contraction of the internal sphincter. But at the same time, we have no contraction of the wall of the rectum. So there's no passage of stool at this point. Now the wall of the GI tract actually contains a lot of nervous, a lot of uh, neurons. So in the wall of the rectum and the rest of the GI tract, there's lots of nerve cells. And these nerve cells form what's called the um, the enteric nervous system. The enteric nervous system. There's a hundred million nerve cells in the wall of the of the gut. It's a very extensive system. So we've got the enteric nervous system inside and this sympathetic supply from the outside. But we've also got another nerve supply um, we've got the base part of the spinal cord here with the sacral nerves. And what we have is we have a sensory nerve or sensory nerves going from the rectum to the spinal cord. And coming back from the spinal cord, there's three main nerves that leave the spinal cord. S2, S3, and S4. These are the sacral nerves, sacral nerve two, sacral nerve three, sacral nerve four. And they approach the rectum and anus. There's a branch that goes off to the muscle of the rectum. And there's another branch that goes off to the internal sphincter. And there's another branch that goes off to the external sphincter. Now, the nerves that inhibited the process of defecation, these ones we looked at before in green, were sympathetic. These ones in red are all parasympathetic. So when the mass transit of the faecal material fills up the rectum and the rectum is stretched. That stretches the wall of the rectum. That is detected by this sensory nerve here, taking the information that the rectum is now stretched 
to the spinal cord. A spinal reflex sends information back via S2, 3 and 4 via these parasympathetic nerves. Now what these parasympathetic nerves will do is they will have a positive effect on the muscles on, in the rectum. They will contract the elongated muscles, the, the longitudinal muscles in the wall of the rectum, causing it to shorten. I think you can see if it shortens the rectum, it's going to squash the fecal material that's in it, increasing the pressure. But at the same time, this parasympathetic supply will have a negative effect on the internal sphincter. Now the internal sphincter here is made of smooth muscle and that means it's under autonomic control. The autonomic branches of the nervous system of course are the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. They are controlling the internal sphincter. But the external sphincter is a striated muscle under voluntary control. This is voluntary. Same kind of muscle as we get in the um, skeletal muscles. So the mass transit has filled up the rectum, stimulated the stretch receptors. That stimulates the enteric nervous system to bring about some contraction of the rectum and some relaxation of the internal sphincter. So the enteric nervous system is trying to squeeze down on the fecal material, relax the sphincter. The combination of the squeezing of the material and the relaxation of the sphincter means that the material can now move through because of the squeezing. And because this sphincter is relaxed, it's no longer being held in, no longer being retained. So when we're not passing stool, the sympathetic nervous system is causing relaxation of the muscle of the rectum, contraction of the internal sphincter, so the material is retained. When it's time to pass the stool, the enteric nervous system will do a bit and cause a bit of stimulation. But most of the stimulation for the defecation reflex is coming from the autonomic nervous system. There'll be reduced input from the sympathetic, meaning that that will be allowed to relax the internal sphincter but mostly there'll be increased stimulation from the parasympathetic. And we can see the parasympathetic is going to contract the muscles of the rectum, but at the same time, it's going to relax the internal sphincter. So the combination of the relaxation of the activity of the sympathetic, the increased activity of the parasympathetic, the activity of the enteric nervous system is all going to start propelling the feces down because the rectum is now contracted and that sphincter is now relaxed. So the material is going to start to go down. But there's another factor here, and that is the voluntary factor. Because this sphincter, the external sphincter, is voluntary. So if the rectum contracts, if the internal sphincter relaxes, if the material goes down into the anal canal, but the external sphincter contracts, that is, we decide it's not appropriate to pass, to pass stool at this time, it's not appropriate to defecate, then the process will stop. So we can decide not to defecate at a particular period of time because of the activity of the external sphincter. But if we feel what we call the call to stool, the activity of the, well, the rectum's now full because of the mass transit, the enteric nervous system's contracting, the parasympathetic is contracting, the parasympathetic is relaxing the internal sphincter, and at the same time, we can strain at stool to some extent. Now, this is called the Valsalva manoeuvre. We close the glottis, close the vocal cords, press down with the diaphragm, press in with the abdominal muscles, increases the pressure in the abdomen and pelvis. And I think you can see that's also going to press down on the outside of the, the rectum, increasing the pressure. So the rectal wall is contracting because of the, uh, the enteric nervous system, it's contracting because of the parasympathetic, and it's being pushed from the outside because we are trying to expel the stool with a valsalva manoeuvre. So the stool will be allowed to go through the now relaxed internal sphincter, and if we relax the external sphincter, the stool will be passed. 
and we will get passage of the faecal material from the rectum. So three things, the enteric nervous system, the autonomic nervous system and the, the voluntary nervous system, the straining and the relaxation of the sphincter. Now, if there's plenty of faecal material, the rectum doesn't have to contract too much if we get plenty of fibre in the diet, fibre fluids in exercise. If we're constipated and it's difficult to pass the stool, for example, if we have a low fibre diet or we're dehydrated or we're not taking exercise, then we need to strain more. It's going to be harder to get the stool out. And we strain more. We, we press down with the diaphragm. We press in. We try and contract the rectum. And what straining does is it will increase the pressure of the blood in the veins in the rectum. And that can damage the valves in those veins. And when you damage the valves in veins, that actually causes a condition called varicose veins. And we can get varicose veins of the rectum, which are piles or hemorrhoids, causing pain and bleeding. So we have an amazing system with the enteric nervous system, the autonomic nervous system with its parasympathetic and sympathetic branches. We have control of this process with our will, with the external sphincter and the Valsalvas manoeuvre, but we can help it along with plenty of fluid, plenty of fibre exercise so we get efficient evacuation of stools with minimal straining, again resulting in an emptied rectum. <laughs>